Hello, this is Leroy Meadows, and in this session, we're going to work on exercise 7 26 out of the back of your chapter. And we're going to be computing price and efficiency variances uh, for direct costs. So, we're going to take an example here of price and efficiency variances. So, let's go ahead and get started. And again, this is exercise 7 26 at the end of your chapter. Sunshine Food manufactures pumpkin scones. For January 2017, it budgeted to purchase and use. 14,750 pounds of pumpkin at 92 cents a pound. Actual purchases and usage for January 2017 were 16,000 pounds at 85 cents a pound. Sunshine budgeted for 59,000 pumpkin scones. Actual output was 59,200 pumpkin scones. So we're asked to do three things. First of all, we're asked to compute the flexible budget variance then compute the price and efficiency variances, and then comment on the results for requirements one and two, and maybe explain or provide some possible explanations for them. So let's extract some basic information here. Um, and let's make a table over here. And I, I like to make a table so I can pull out basic information, and then I have something to work with here. So my actual results, so let's take a look at our budget results first. I budgeted for how many pumpkin skills? I budgeted for 59000 and oops, the wrong cell. Fifty-nine thousand. And how much was I? How how much total pounds of pumpkin did I want? I wanted fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. That's how much I budgeted for. And the cost per unit or per pound of pumpkin was ninety-two cents. So let's go ahead and format this. And this should be a price, so let's go ahead and do that. Now let's take a look at our actual results. How many uh, pumpkin scones did I actually create and make? 59,200. We're told that in the problem here. How many pounds of pumpkin did I actually use? Well, I actually used, what, 16,000 pounds. Uh, so 16,000 pounds. And what was my cost per pound? My actual cost per pound was, what, 85 cents a pound. So having this basic information set aside, now I can actually create my flexible budget variance, uh, static budget variant, or sales volume variance, and create all my variances like I would in a performance report. So let's take a look here. And my static budget called for how much costs of pumpkin costs. Well, if at 92 cents per pound times 59 uh, times 14,750 pounds that I was budgeted to make, I should have a cost of 13,570. That should have been the number uh, of the amount of my pumpkin cost based on my budgeted amount. What were my actual results? My actual results were my cost came in less at 85 cents a pound. So 85 cents a pound, and I actually used 16,000 pounds of pumpkin. So my actual results were 13,600. Does that mean anything? Not quite yet, but let's go ahead here and take a look. Okay, now when we take a look at our flexible budget amount, how are we going to figure that out? Well, we need to figure out the budgeted price per unit times the number of pounds in each scone. That's the only way we're going to get our pumpkin cost. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's take a look at our budgeted amount of 59, 000, or 14,750 pounds of pumpkin. And if we divide that by 59,000 pounds or 59,000 scones, we will get a cost or, a, or we're going to use pumpkin of a quarter of a pound of pumpkin per scone. So now, based on our actual results, I'm going to use this amount here, 0.25 pounds. So my actual results, 59,200 times 0.25, or a quarter of a pound of pumpkin. So I should have used, uh, let me see here, why is my calculator not working? There we go. Uh, 59,200 times 0.25. And I should have used 14,800 pounds of pumpkin. 
So I want to take that amount of usage here, 14,800, and multiply that by my budgeted cost per unit. So times 0.92. And my flexible budget is going to be $13,616. So $13,616. Now from there, I can calculate my sales volume variance. And what is my sales volume variance? Well, remember, sales volume variance is just simply based on the difference in the unit sold. So my sales volume variance is 13616 Minus 13,570. So 46 pounds. So that's my sales volume variance. So 46. Now, is that good or bad? Is that favorable or unfavorable? Well, it's unfavorable because, or is that uh, unfavorable? Why? Because my costs were actually higher. And again, that's just based on the difference in sales volume. Even though I sold more, my cost went up, so that's why it's unfavorable. Now we can do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between our actual results and our flexible budget results. Based on my flexible budget, I should have used 13,616 pound or dollars worth of pumpkin. So I should have used 13,616 dollars worth of pumpkin. The actual cost of the pumpkins I paid for was 13,600. So in this case, with this one line item, because remember, um, our favorable variances are uh, just that one line item, all else being equal. If our costs go down or our revenue goes up, that is a favorable variance. In this case, our costs went down by $16, so I should have, uh, and it came in at $16 less. So I'm going to mark that as $16 favorable. So now, Let's take a look, and my flexible budget variance is $16 favorable. Now, how do we get that? And let me center this here. Now, how do we get the sales volume or flexible budget variance of $16 favorable? Well, remember, the flexible budget is comprised of two additional variances, the price or cost variance and the efficiency variance. So let's go ahead and take a look at our price variance. And we did what well, our actual cost came in at 13,600. And our budgeted price, our flexible budget was 13,616. So what am I going to do here? Well, Hold on just one second. Let me. F there we go. Now I want to compute the actual input quantity times my budget of price. So, how much pounds of pumpkin did I actually use? I used 16,000 pounds. I'm going to multiply that by my budgeted rate of 92 cents a pound. So, when I do that, let me do that. And I should get a dollar amount of $14,720. From here, I can calculate my price variance and my efficiency variance. My price variance is going to be one thousand. the difference between 13600 and 14720 So the difference, I'm going to have a favorable price variance of $1,120. And let me, $1,120 favorable. And then my efficiency variance is simply going to be the difference between this number here, 14,720, and 13,616. And that gives me an efficiency variance of $1,104 unfavorable. And why is it unfavorable? Because I actually used more pumpkin uh, than I should have had, my flexible budget. So here I'm, I'm looking, and these two things here are going to give me my price and efficient my price and efficiency variances so let me just look, label that here price efficiency and how do i know that they are accurate well i can just use the formula in the book that we were given in the powerpoint here and i can use use a different formula in order to get this 
But let's take a look here at the price. We know that our budgeted price of 92 cents was way overestimated because we actually were able to buy the pumpkin at 85 cents a pound. So when we know that we are actu our actual cost per pound of pumpkin or per input unit, um, we know that I'm going to have a favorable price variance. So price variance deals with the cost. Efficiency variance deals with the usage of the pumpkin in this situation. And in this case, we may have bought the pumpkin for a lot less, but we end up having to use more of it. And that's why I have an efficiency variance here. Let's compute the price variance uh, and, and cost variances according to the formulas given in the text and in our PowerPoint. Uh, my price variance is simply going to be my actual cost per unit of input minus my budgeted cost per unit of input times my, bud my budgeted amount. And when I do that, and actually that should be my, not my times my budget amount, but times my actual amount. So let me go ahead and correct that here. So the difference in cost per unit, actual cost minus budgeted cost, times the actual amount uh, of quantity, of total quantity used. And that would probably be a more uh, a clear way of seeing, saying that. So what do I have here? I have 85 cents of my actual cost per unit minus my budgeted cost per unit of 92 cents times the actual total quantity used. And I actually use 16,000 pounds of pumpkin. And when I do that, let me go ahead and go on the calendar. Or the calculator here. 0.85 minus 0.92 equals that times 16,000. And I have a $1,120 variance here, uh, favorable variance. So I can compute my favorable variance here. Now let's take a look at the efficiency variance. My efficiency variance, and let's just mark that down here, is simply going to be actual total quantity of input used minus budgeted quanti quantity of input used. And we're going to multiply that. And it's going to be, and let me go back over here, times my budgeted price. And let me go back here. And let's clarify this. Base of the quantity of input used allowed for actual output. So based on actual output, how much should I have used? So if I take how much I should have used, uh, 59,200, and 59,200 times 0.25, I should have used 14,800. So let's compute this here. Actual total quantity of input used, and how much did I actually use? 16,000. And let's put that in parentheses here for order of operations. Minus the 14,000, and what do we say it was? 14,800, my flexible budget amount, uh, for what we should have used times my budgeted price or cost per input, 0.92. And when I do that, uh, let me do that here in my calculator, 16,000 minus 14,800 gives me 1,200 times 0.92. I have an unfavorable variance of $1,104, the same thing as I calculated here. So I can do this one of two ways to calculate my price and efficiency variances here. I can use this table here, or I can use my formulas in the book here. And those formulas, we have them right here on the PowerPoint that we talked about. Uh, price formula and variant efficiency variance formula. So we can use either one of those.
Okay, so now let's take a look and comment on the results from requirements one and two and have some uh, a, a possible explanation for those. Well, the flexible budget variance is really kind of small when you look at it. It's only a $16 uh, variance and it's favorable. But again, the flexible budget variance is comprised of two different sub variances, if you want to go with that. Remember, the flexible budget variance is a level two analysis. The level three analysis looks at price and efficiency. Um, and we would do this for direct materials as well as direct labor in this chapter. And we just did direct materials in this problem just because it was easier to do one and just focus on one so we can learn how those numbers work. But if we see, we saved a lot of money. We saved $1,120 for what we should have spent based on our actual output. However, we used a heck of a lot more pumpkins. So did we actually gain here? We really didn't gain much of anything. So we used up more pumpkins to make the scones than was budgeted. But we paid a lot less price. So maybe we bought lower quality pumpkins at a lower cost per pound and because they were lower uh, lower quality we had to use a lot more that could definitely be an explanation and it looks like that might be the explanation in this case so that would be my analysis on this problem here uh, so this, again this is exercise 7-26 this is Leroy Meadows have a good day